G.I. Kyle. When I'm not taking shirtless selfies on Instagram and drinking White Claw while having hot sex with my wife, Karen, and making truck videos, I like to listen to the shows on VRS, Veteran Radio Syndicate, your home for the best quality veteran entertainment. The recognized symbol of excellence in online entertainment. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Sports Church right here on the Veteran Radio Syndicate, the recognized symbol of excellence for online entertainment for veterans and patriots like I'm your host, John Kramer, a.k.a. Mini, a United States Marine Corps veteran, 2311 was on MOS, IOA, some car carry member the E4 Mafia, allegedly, and an OG of the Veteran Radio Syndicate. We're short staff tonight, but joining me, as always, is Pops, the father, our auto racing expert. How are you doing? Hey, hey. I, I got lost in the opening. Anyway, ah. I'm here. Well, yeah, I'd say Pook and uh, what's up, CJ? How you doing, brother? Pook and um, Pterodactyl are indisposed. Pook is in an undisclosed location, which is par for the course for him. And uh, T is at his daughter's softball game, and they are kicking butt. Last time I checked, the score was 9-3, to three, so way to go, Sammy. And, yeah, uh, what's new? What's happening? How you doing? A crazy racing weekend. Oh. Um and it's it's it's, it's kind of anxious to get it started. We got one last race, the uh, the open race tonight, and uh, that'll be going on in Texas. It'll be starting on that another hour or so. So, uh, racing been exciting. Two IndyCar races, the first SRX race. So, a bunch of stuff happening this weekend. It's been kind of cool. Right on, right on. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anybody knows got a dog? He's uh the other week. He's a little uh. American Standard Pit, about nine to twelve months old. He's a, um, it's a great dog. Uh, he's pretty good on the leash already. Getting pretty good on house broken. He was chained up outside a lot when he was a puppy, and then he was abandoned when we got him. So he's all kinds of trust issues and whatnot. But uh, he doesn't have one with us, so that's good. He loves the boy. He's very protective of him. Always has an eye on him. Uh, loves my wife, loves me, sleeps with us at night usually. Uh, he doesn't get up and check on James. Doesn't get along with the cats at all. Weird, but uh, that's all right. Hopefully that'll come around because uh, the cats aren't really – cats are a bonus. They're fun, but uh, they don't protect my family. They just run and hide and shit. So uh, <clears throat> he's already had a couple occasions where he's alerted us, so that's good. So, yeah, uh, and just, you know, some shitty news about my shoulder. Some shitty slash good news, depending on how you look at it. But uh, eventually it's going to get fixed, so we got that. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to do a quick uh, we're a quick short show and and move on. Uh, start off with the UFC. And, of course, we had UFC 263 last night. And our, our big, you know, you know, I went over our picks. You know how we did? How did we do? We all, we all tied. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's everybody, like kitchen your sister. <laughs> everybody, everybody got three right. Yeah, everybody got three right. Everybody got one wrong. We all picked four fights. Um, let's see, Reyna got the um, the Diaz fight wrong, and I got the Diaz fight wrong, but everybody else got it right. And um, what is the other one that people got wrong? Uh, Pook uh, got Hill wrong. Um. I think you got uh, the Maya fight wrong as well as T got it wrong. So we all had one wrong fight. But yeah, <laughs> so nothing. It was kind of a, it was uh, when I looked at it, I was like, well, that makes sense. Because it wasn't a very exciting night. We, we, we built it up and it was going to be great. It was going to be awesome. And no real big surprises. There were some gruesome things that happened. Go figure. It's cage fighting. There's going to be some gruesome shit that's going to happen. But, you know, like dislocated arms, you know. Pops and he thought I can't remember which one it was now, and I'm staring right. Whatever I can't remember how okay. you say his name. Yeah, yeah. All right, now I remember. Yeah, uh, Damian Maya versus uh, uh, Muhammad. Yeah. Okay. So no big surprises, uh, and I don't know what we were thinking, but you know the one that was really 
everybody was juicing over was the first two was the uh, Israel Adesanya versus Marvin Vittori and Delvis and Figueroa versus Brandon Moreno. Everybody was kind of, you know, those were two biggest build fights of the night. Nothing really, no big surprise. No, no, no huge surprises, really. Um, so kind of, I don't know what to tell about it. You know, I mean, everybody knew going, uh, Nate Diaz going to let, uh, into the Edwards fight, which I believe I, I, me and Reyna both picked uh, Diaz because we just we believed in the insane toughness of that guy, and he proved it once again. But, you know, he almost won that fight. I don't know if you caught that one, but it, uh, with about a minute to go, Diaz – Done, Leonard with or Edwards, excuse me, with a left and nasty one, and it was like, oh shit, here we go. Diaz is gonna pull it off in the last minute, and Edwards might manage to hang on. Uh, so yeah, Edwards had run every round, yeah, yeah. The last one. But if he it's knocks just... him out in the minute, it don't matter, you know. And it looked like <laughs> he had the chance to knock. He hit him hard. I was like, oh shit, you know. I just kind of jumped back in the. In the couch, I'm like, oh, he might do it if he if he goes right now. And I, I don't, I, th I don't think he had much left, so I don't think he could finish him off. But uh, that was probably one of the more exciting ones. I mean, um, of course, you had the injury in the uh, Damian Maya and uh, Bilal Muhammad fight, but you know, Muhammad, as uh, uh, several of us predicted, came out on top. Not at you know, not huge, right there. Brandon Moreno and Figueroa, eh. You know, it ended up by a submission, uh, round three, 230, 226 left to go. And it, he got it, slapped on, boom, done. Uh, Israel and Asanya, he was in control of that whole fight. Uh, almost that entire fight. I think Marvin Vittori had like three or four decent takedowns, but uh, he didn't do anything to it. And Anasani actually got his back a couple of times too. So with some good striking and some really vicious leg kicks. Um I hope that some guys start to develop a better counter to that. I don't know what it is. I need my UFC and MMA experts to do that. But I'm really sick of seeing a lot of fights go down to dudes standing five feet away from each other, taking a step and kicking a dude in the leg, and that's the fight. That's basically what that fight was. And it was just kind of like, huh? And I like Israel. I, you know, it, it, He got some good shots in there and whatnot, but he basically won that fight just kicking a dude in the leg. Yeah. I don't know. Not that exciting to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if I would have paid 70 some odd dollars for it, even less so, but, um, I didn't allegedly, um, <laughs> it was, it so was I, something like a $3 million gate though. That was wild. That was, a, you know, yeah, well, they, people or whatever. So that I think wild. they had 17, eight. Yeah. Like max capacity, which that was cool. So it was cool to finally have like, like a massive sold out uh, crowd totally into it. So, you know, there were some neat aspects to it, you know, uh, but Again, nothing earth shattering, nothing, uh, nothing big. I think the, uh, Israel uh, stated it during the post game press conference that he is is ready for the number one challenger, and you know he's fought what three times already. Uh, I think yeah, he's got three, three. He's had three, three championship fights. So right. So and he says he wants another one. He wants another one in Auckland, his home turf. So hell, that ain't gonna happen. That's, yeah. like saying, that's like saying you're going to fight in Canada. I mean, yeah, I don't, can't right? Get there. Well, as soon as he said, he's like, well, maybe Fight Island Part 3, maybe here in the U.S., I don't know, but wherever it happens, fuck it, I'm ready. I was just <laughs> kind of laughing, like, yes, you are. You could go right now if they, if you, they, if they let you, wouldn't you? Um, so, yeah, nothing big, and we'll have a bunch more for you next week, uh, without a doubt. So, yeah, I mean, I could show you some highlights, but I know, hey, you've already seen them, uh, or you've seen the fight. So I don't nothing spectacular worth uh, going into depth with uh, or over. Uh, it, anything else about the fights? I, I was like I said, I wasn't impressed. It was kind of disappointing. You know, maybe the undercards were were full of action. I didn't catch them. I only caught the last three. So yeah. I don't got anything else. Moving on. Uh, yeah. Let's just go. Let's see, Michael Farley. Do you think Rotten Rousey should come back to the UFC or WWE? She's done in the UFC, man. She's done. She's done. Yeah. It's over. Uh, you know, she uh, she had her shot. She had her 15 minutes of fame. She extended it, used it well, and parlayed it into, you know, I don't know what you call a successful career, but uh, several success uh, successful paychecks in movies, 
and TV. And the WWE is not a bad place to be if, if you're still into that and want to make some money and get that attention. But now nah, she's no way she can't come back. She's done. Uh, the, the game has, uh, the sport has uh, leapfrogged her uh, immensely. So she was good while she's in. And uh, when she's not getting beat up by Holly Holm, she's not too bad to look at. But <laughs> when she does fight, she ends up looking like um, Sloth from the Goonies. So, you know, now, but uh, I appreciate the question, Michael. Really, I do. But nah, she's not coming back. That's over. Uh, once you make that leap, it's done. So, yeah, moving on. Uh, all right. So you said we had a crazy week weekend in auto racing. We still have um, – do we still have the Circuit of Americas going on with NASCAR? I mean, it started at five-ish, right? Well, that, that, was, the, that was the open. That's the, 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 the last dance qualifiers into the all-star race tonight. Oh, okay. Um, it, 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 it's been crazy. The SRX, which I told you, is, is that experimental series that Tony Stewart um, – and Ray Ray Abraham put together mm-hmm. uh, w- was the, the very first race on CBS was last night. Uh, I mean, I mean they had the, the right people. Uh, let's see: Michael Walter, Bill Elliott, Marco Andretti, Paul Tracy, Willie T. Ribs, Tony Canon, Ernie Francis from uh, from Road Racing, Bobby Labonte, uh, Elio Castroneves, Tony Stewart, Big Biffle. Um, and then a local guy uh, that was picked uh, that uh, was picked to, to fill out the field uh, was Doug Colby. He's a, uh, a modified or super modified driver out of NASCAR. Got seven titles and 30 wins at, at the speedway, and he just embarrassed the hell out of all the stars. <laughs> <laughs> No, SRX is the you said it's an experimental series, but for those who don't know, what are they racing in? Are it's supercars? It, it's a it's a car that was developed by Ray Everham. Okay. Uh, designed to go fast, but it's not easy to go fast. Uh, it's hard to drive fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, it basically it looks pretty much like a stock car. It's got a great big old wing on it. Um, <laughs> it's it's really weird looking. Um, and, and the racing is not that good right now. Uh, I think they found out that uh, they can't get together. Um, I mean, they, they had a couple of accidents where guys were trying to pass. But other than that, it was pretty much uh, all of the leader, especially when uh, when the, the uh, young guy get out front. He just he just made everybody look so bad. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he, he probably had a half, half a straightaway – lead on everybody and 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 no one else was getting you know was catching to it at all he they actually threw it they actually threw a caution because he was sneaking up the, the show ah! <laughs> you can't embarrass uh, our stars like this stop it <laughs> wow i'm surprised they didn't go out and slap him or something yeah right <laughs> they might have after the race but you know <laughs> but he, he uh he was impressive and <laughs> and you know he, he says you know that was uh, it was it was the Epitome of racing for a for a short track guy because you know this is what short track guys do they go out and and, and race every week and they, here it was they're racing on a short track and uh, they really really look good no one looked foolish um, Willie T Ribs had the most trouble uh, and he's the oldest guy in the field so maybe yeah, that's, that's something either with who knows <laughs> but uh, Willie T's a pretty good racer yeah uh, he may be over the hill who knows uh, Michael Walter have had some troubles but. Michael Walter had troubles when he was in NASCAR, so yeah, <laughs> that wasn't anything new. That was something to expect. Uh, but I, I still think that this has got a chance to become a, an unbelievable sport. Uh, it's every Saturday night on CBS. Next week they're at Knoxville, Iowa, so that's going to be that's going to be special on dirt. Oh wow, and, uh, cool! And the 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 local amateur, I guess if you want to call him. Um, it, it's Scott Bloomquist. <laughs> Scott Bloomquist, one of the winningest drivers in all of the uh, dirt racing, yeah, uh, is going to be challenging the superstar. So uh, that that should be a lot of fun. Awesome. Um, IndyCar was at uh, Bell Isle in in Detroit. Yeah, the doubleheader, right? They they, uh, they had an excellent excellent show uh, yesterday. Um, <laughs> Will Power had had the race 
there were fans of us. But they had two yellow, or two actually red flags. Uh, one because both of them were because of crashes, and they had to clean up the the, the, uh, the track before they could continue on with the race. So anyway, uh, after the red flag was pulled for the second race, and and Power was leading probably the last forty laps uh, before the red flag. Uh, and they pulled the red flag, and they sent all the cars back out on the field, and and Will Power's car wouldn't start. <laughs> and so he went from first place to, like, 17th place because uh, there's only two laps to go. <laughs> and, and so uh, he didn't have a chance to make back, make it back up. So Will Power uh, was extremely disappointed. You no, know, he was mad. <laughs> he um, He's driving that, that uh, 5G car from Verizon. Mm-hmm. This year, and it's just a plain black. Uh, 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 I don't know what you call it. It's not even a shiny black. It's a dull black. Yeah. And uh, the thought being is that it was sitting in the heat, and it was like eighty-five degrees, and and in the sun, it's probably one hundred and ten degrees with that black. Yeah. And it, it overheated the uh, electronic unit, and it kept the car from starting. So anyway, <laughs> that, that's. The, that's the theory on that one. Wow. Um, so, so Will Powers' ex- extremely piss poor season continues. Yeah. He came back today, and uh, again, it was a Penske car leading the way. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and yet, he didn't win. <laughs> if that, if, if that, or, uh, or, you know, possible, I guess is the best way to explain it. Yeah. Uh, Joseph Newgarden. A dynamite driver, two-time uh, NTT uh, IndyCar champion, uh, led like you know, seventy some odd laps, uh, except for the last like three laps. <laughs> uh, and the the prize winner, Ado Award, um, the kid from Mexico, probably made up five or six positions. In the last five laps, ooh, and then came up and passed Joseph uh, to take the lead. It, it was um, impressive. Uh, Pato is the first two-time winner this year. Um, it's it's the uh, I think second or third week that a a under twenty-five driver is leading the points. Pato is now the points leader. Uh, so uh, we really are having a changing of the guard because. Uh, you know, Pato is is, uh, is now your points leader, and uh, it's 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 going to be an interesting season the rest of the year. Next week they're at uh, Road America. Yay! Uh, I wish I was there. I mean, yeah, that, that is an awesome, awesome track. Yep. For more reasons than one, very yeah. beautiful track. It's a fun track to watch. It's even a more fun track to watch and eat because they have some of the most greatest food you ever want to eat at a racetrack. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of the church's name, but they have these really, 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 really good uh, tenderloin sandwiches that you you just can't beat. Uh, the bratwurst there are great, so uh, it, it, it's it's all it's all good at Road America, to say the least. Nice, nice. And uh, we, we come up to NASCAR, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there. They don't start for another hour, or so okay. Oh. Alrighty then. Um, moving on, let's do a little MLB. Let's let's have a little fun. Let's start out with I'm gonna make Pops guess the player again. Oh this one's gonna no! Be, this one's gonna be really easy. This one's really easy. I'm, I'm gonna give it away because I didn't prepare for it as much as I probably should have. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get some music with it too. Watch this. Here we go. All right. So, this individual was born August 30th, 1918. All right. Uh, one of his nicknames was The Kid, The Splendid Splinter, or The Thumper. Uh, 19-time All-Star. Uh, he actually had quite a distinguished military career. Uh, flew for the United States Navy and the United States Marine Corps in World War II. Also flew for the Marine Corps in Korea, where he was the wingman, but always flew lead. This is from the goat's mouth. He flew lead for me because he had the best eyesight in 
the Marine Corps. That was a statement from, oh, you might have heard of this guy. He was an astronaut. His name was John Glenn. No big deal, you know. Yeah, he he was the he was the lead commander, and he says, "Ah, you've got like thirty ten vision up front now because you know no <laughs> no radars no radars back then, so every all identification was done by eyesight. So, um, I mean, you had you had field ground radars, but nobody was into the business of command and control and directing. So you had a guy out front." Uh, and you had to get visual eyes on, on those birds, on those bogeys, and this guy had 3010 vision, which is like one in a half a billion people have that. Uh, so I'm guessing it helped with his baseball career a little bit. But yeah, I flew lead for, uh, for his commander, John Glenn. Uh, one of the best hitters of all time. He had a lifetime batting average of, uh, oh god, where is it? Do, 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 do. Where was his lifetime batting average? 344. Uh, hit 2,654 hits, 521 home runs, 1,839 RBIs. Stole a mm, 24 bases, but oh well. Had a 482 on base percentage, which is yeesh. 636 slugging percentage. Um, unbelievable. Let's see what else we can get in here. You got any idea who it is yet? No, I'm trying to think that the... the, the... The 344 batting average, real close to the guy we had last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, real close. Um, wow. He once posted a 406 batting average in a season. Uh, he followed that up uh, just a couple years later by winning the Triple Crown in 1942. Uh, let's see here. I, I'm trying to think of, of things to give it away or, or to give you a hint without totally giving it away. Um, you didn't see here. All right, I'll give it away. How about that? I'll just give it away. Why not? Yeah, please. Uh, um, he played for the Red Sox. 34 4 bad average, 19 seasons, 4 19 18. 19-time All-Star, Triple Crown winner, 406 band average in one season. His last hit as a Major League Baseball player was a home run into right field. Back when the fences were like 400 feet, too, by the way. Not 320. Uh, which, you know, probably about two, three years ago. I could Did you say he was born in 1918? Mm-hmm. Died in 2002. Fought in World War II and Korea. Nickname the Thumper. He's got several nicknames, but uh, <laughs> we don't. Uh, I can't give you the other ones. Uh, two-time recipient <laughs> of AL MVP, six-time batting champion, two-time Triple Crown winner. Um, let's see. Born in San Diego. That helps. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> he also an avid sports fisherman. He hosted a television program about fishing. He was inducted into the IGFA Fishing Hall of Fame. Uh, he was elected in 1997 to Major League Baseball's all-time team. 1997 and Major League Baseball's all-century team in 1999. Uh, left-handed batter. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Oh. oh, man, come on. All right, let's see if I can give you another one. Um, oh, to do, do, do. Yeah, let's just go with it. No, I don't know. No, no, he's a Red Sox. He's a Red Sox. Oh. Basically, say this name in. Uh, it's not Stremsky. Uh, all right, let me give you one that I remember of him personally. He used to say you could you could spot the circle on top of a curveball as it was coming to him, and he knew exactly what pitch it was before he had to make a decision whether to hit it or not. Other nickname was the kid. Um. I'm, I am drawing a complete blank. Oh, uh, you're going to kick your ass if I fucking give it away, though. I'm telling you. <laughs> you're really going to kick yourself in the ass. 
Uh, let's see if I can find any more like interesting statistics about him. Ah, uh, let's see. I bet you I know. Who did Roger Hornsby play for? Uh, that's an excellent question. <clears throat> Part of me wants to say the Red Sox, but I don't believe that's right. Um, let me see if I can get some quotes from this individual. That you might help. Ruth born. <laughs> Way before 1918. Uh, <clears throat> like I he was playing baseball uh, at that time. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Top 25 quotes. Uh, I found in my life the more... Oh, what is going on? I really hate computers sometimes. There we go. I found in life the more you practice, the better you get. If you want something enough and work hard to get it, your chances of success are greater. Uh, no one has come up with substitute for hard work. Uh, it's a funny thing, but as years go by, I think you appreciate more and more what a thing it is to be called a United States Marine. People will tell me what a shame it was. I had to go back into the service a second time, but I'm kind of glad I did. Besides, I'm a U.S. Marine, and I'll be one till I die. No, you won't. You'll be one in forever, and when you die, you have to report for duty. So it never stops sucking. Uh, Ed Williams? There you go. There you go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right. Good job. If you were to tell you were chasing women, I would have figured it out. Ah, well... <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know why any professional athlete gets married, but whatever. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Kobe Bryant's uh, wife never hit a layup, but she got $350 million. So whatever. <laughs> I don't know uh, why they took so long to come up with it. but oh, I wow. know. I was trying so hard. I, I could have made it a little bit better. Again, I, I thought of it late and I didn't have enough time to kind of put together <laughs> a kind of chronological thing. And then so I finally went to the quotes. I figured you might. You might get there, but yeah, old Teddy Ball game. He hit um, hit his 500th home run this week, uh, June 17th, I believe it was. Yep. So good old Teddy Ball game. Probably the, one of the, arguably one of the greatest hitters of all time. I mean that that's an argument you can. Whew, I, yeah. <laughs> that was supposed to be a, a two second or two minute. And we took it for at least 10. That's all right. <laughs> no gives a shit. All right. Let's go over to standings this week in baseball. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, here it is. This is the one that, that ticked it off. I was just looking for some stuff in history. Uh, June 17, 1960, Ted Williams of the Boston Red Sox became the fourth major league player to hit 500, 500 home runs. Wow. So before 1960, only three dudes. Had hit 500 home runs. Now, how many are there? Let's find out. Because <laughs> we, <got, laughs> we got some time to kill. All right. How many players have, oops, I hate this keyboard, have hit 500 home runs? Oh, 500 home run. Uh, Wikipedia. Oh, my God. All right. So. Uh, by 1960, right? That was 1960? Yeah. He became the fourth. Wow. Okay. So, two, four, six, eight. So, how many players after that did it? I have no idea. You got the answer. You looked it up. 23. Really? In 60 years. 23 guys. Yeah. And only three had done it before 1960 until dead. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they think pitchers got all the advantages, and yet the hitters are going like crazy. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, bottom of the bottom of the barrel is old uh, chicken wing himself, Eddie Murray. Remember that? Yeah. That. I don't yep. want to do it with my shoulder, but he used to do the <laughs> chicken wing thing like yep. this. Uh, it was, yeah. God, it drove me nuts as a pitcher. Probably why he did it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, look at the list here. I mean, Eddie Murray at the bottom. Then you got Gary Sheffield, Mel Ott. Woo! Wow. Ernie, Ernie <laughs> Banks. 
All right. The Covey yeah. action in there. Uh, Willem McCovey, Manny Ramirez, Reggie Jackson, Harmon Killebrew. Uh, you go up to the top, then you got uh, Babe Ruth at 714, Hank Aaron at 755, and Barry Bonds at 762. Interesting. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's look at the standings here. So, and give me a little insight of what's going on here. Well, not much has changed in the AL Central. Uh, the uh, only baseball team with the jail built into their stadium, the Chicago White Sox, are just running away with it. They are five and a half games up on the Cleveland Indians. They're eight and two in their last ten, six thirty one winning percentage, and they are just bashing everybody. Kansas City, Detroit, and Minnesota round out the rest of the hapless AL Central. In the AL East, things are a little tighter, but not by much. Tampa Bay still leading the pack, 42-24, 636 winning percentage, 7-3 and three in their last 10. Boston, three games behind. Toronto, 7.5. The Yankees, in an almost reverse of last season, and before the Boston Red Sox were at the bottom, the Yankees at the top. Yankees are just tanking it, 8.5 games back, and Baltimore is going for that first overall draft pick next year with a record of 22-42. and 42. Woo, not a fun year at Cadman Yards. Unfortunately, <laughs> just count yourself lucky you play and you get to visit a very, very beautiful ballpark. So, you know, when you're paying $75 for the nosebleeds, um, you know, hey, enjoy that at least, right? Your team sucks, but at least you got a good view, right? Uh, the Oakland A's in a ever-tightening race in the AL West. Are up. They are 8-2. and two. They're doing everything they really need to do as far as the Oakland A's go. Eight and two in their last ten, but they are only a game and a half back from the uh, garbage can clanging Houston Astros. The rest of the division is just nah. It seems that letting Albert Pujols has done nothing to change the fortune of Joe Madden and his Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. That probably has a lot to do with is they have the Daniel Schneider of MLB, and if you know who Daniel Schneider is, he's the CEO and owner of. The Washington football team, who's been throwing more money at problems than uh, public education and getting the same results. So, uh, Seattle Mariners, uh, only story I got about them is they're they're a little bit disappointing this year. But keep your eye out for a guy named Mitch Hanniger. All right. He is a beast of a corner outfielder, mashing balls. Do not be surprised if you don't see him. Be surprised if you don't see him in the AL or in the All Star game uh, this year in Atlanta. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. They have racist voting laws there. What was I thinking? Um, they in uh, Colorado. And I, you know what? They had they had a, a it wasn't Supreme Court. It was a local court that, that said that uh, the, the 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 I don't know. The, I guess the business owners have. Atlanta didn't prove their case that they lost any money uh, by moving the thing to Colorado. How the hell can you say that not having the ball in, in your city is not going to bring money to you? I, 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 don't, I don't, don't understand that. But leave it to the court to figure that out. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Um, unfortunately, uh, yeah, uh, Atlanta, and, which is a predominantly black city, uh, is getting robbed out of hundreds of millions of dollars because of already debunked and retracted so-called uh, racist voting laws. But that's all you need to do in any uh, these days to get anybody canceled is call them racist, homophobic, transphobic, misogynistic, or mansplainish, and it's done. <laughs> but, uh, you know, whatever. Hey, you don't care about, um, you know, you don't care about the little people. We know that. But anyways, um, yeah, so going back to Mitch Hanniger, do be surprised if you don't see him in the uh, All-Star game. He is a beast. He's on fire, and Seattle's not doing well, and there'll be some teams looking for bats in the AL, in the NL, of course, but, uh, you know, Cleveland might be in there. Um, Boston certainly, I'm sure, is looking for a bat, and um, – that field in Boston would suit Mitch Hanniger very, very well. To the National League and the you're gonna have trouble telling me what the hell's going on there. But I'm looking at my Cincinnati Reds in third place, and I that can't be. Well, the, yeah, you know, what's they... going on? <laughs> <laughs> They're over 500 too. I know, but it's early. Um, 
in the NL West, you got San Francisco hanging by a thread uh, with a lead over the Dodgers. Uh, they're a game and a half above the Dodgers. They're six. Both teams are six and four in their last ten. Uh, it's uh, it's a crowded, crowded, crowded field. Uh, San Diego, after running into the buzzsaw that is the Chicago Cubs, <laughs> um, now they did tear them up. They did tear them up. Uh, it salvaged the, the uh, road trip for uh, the Cubs, and I'll talk about that in a, l- a little bit later. But, yeah, the front three are all jammed up within three games of each other. So this one's way, 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 way too early to call, except if you are Arizona uh, Dimeback fan or Colorado Rockies fan, they're done, out of it, gone, bye-bye. Yeah. Uh, they're 15 and a half and 20 games behind, respectively. But San Diego, the Dodgers, and San Francisco, all teams who you know are going to play each other 19 times at least. So that's going to be interesting. That could very yeah, much go I, down I, to the I wire. I thought San Diego was supposed to be really going to wipe that that group out. What happened? I, well, I thought they I knew they were going to be good. Uh, I knew the Dodgers were going to be good. I thought it was, you know, my only mistake was discounting the, the Giants. I didn't think they had any firepower. Uh, their pitching is a little suspect. They're both, but, you know, hey, they chewed the Cubs up bad. They took three out of four from the Cubs. And, uh, so that helped them out a lot in the, in the in the very tight race. They needed those games desperately, but and so did San Diego. San Diego took the first one, uh, and then the Cubs took the rest. So I don't know how San Francisco's doing it. It, I didn't think they'd even be remotely close. I thought they were kind of phoning it in this year, but it turns out they've still got quite a lot of fight left in them. What, and, what did the Dodgers lose from last year? Uh, almost nobody. That's what I'm getting at. What the, what the hell? Why are they? They, they, lost, butt? they lost Jock Peterson. He went to the Cubs. Uh, other than the few minor guys that go in and out, they signed, uh, re-signed a lot of guys like Justin Turner. They extended him. You know, the guy who got in all kinds of trouble on the field because he was celebrating and breaking social distancing with his teammates after he won the World Fucking Series. Oh, geez, oh my God. <laughs> you people really need to reevaluate your personal sense of risk, okay? Seriously. Uh, mood, I, but as far as how they're doing it, I'm not sure. Their pitching is, is just good enough. Their bullpen is just good enough. They do play in a very pitcher-friendly ballpark. That helps a lot. But um, they're just getting it done, and it's not like they're playing a weak schedule because they're playing against two divisional opponents that some people could argue are some of the best in baseball, not only NL, but just in baseball period. So, you know, I think that's one of the reasons you have such a muddled uh, NL West is that you've got three teams that are really fucking good. All three of them are really, really good. Uh, They're stacked. Uh, San Francisco, probably the least of those three, but still, Still a really good team. When you play in a, in a, in a pitcher-friendly ballpark, you know that can mask a lot of issues that you have on your team. So, yeah. <laughs> Moving on to the NL East. Uh, up top, this one has got me completely dumbfounded. The New York Mets. Probably. <laughs> How can all, that be? Yeah, <laughs> I know. But probably a lot behind uh, one of the nastiest nastiest power pitchers in, in a generation being Jason DeGrom. I mean, nobody should be able to throw 98-99 as a starting pitcher and paint corners. That's just fucking unfair. That's just, <laughs> they need to put like a gravity assist on that ball and knock it down like three, four miles an hour. That's stupid. You can't throw 99 and then throw 90 and then throw 85 and then throw 96. I mean, it's just Jesus Christ. Although, <laughs> the dude gets hurt a lot. So, you know, he, he strains. Right right now, I think he's dealing with an oblique um, tenderness. So they had to pull him in the sixth inning after he struggled like 13. It's <laughs> fucking stupid. Like, hey, sit down. You're hurt. No, I'm not. You're hurt. <laughs> sit down. He struck out 13. You're good. We got it. They're scared to death. Um, and now they're so eager, they're going to swing at anything. So put the blind kid up, all right? Um <laughs> And they just put little sensors when he's looking at home plate. So he can hear if he looks to the left or the right, it goes beep. And if you look straight ahead, the blank, he can throw balls and let the hitter try and hit that because might as well. They weren't hitting anything else anyways. Uh, it was an unbelievable game. I, I got an alert on my phone and I went and checked it. And I'm just like, oh, my God, this guy's filthy. So behind him and a couple other guys in that starting staff, uh, they're six and four in the last ten are the Mets. Three games up on the Philadelphia Phillies. I don't expect the Phillies. 
to move. They do have room. They do have some money. So if anybody is going to be active, I would think it would be Philly. Now, by saying that, Atlanta, who has been riddled with injuries this year, yeah. is still hanging on. They're below 500, 30 and 30, 5 and 5, and they're, they're just treading water. And you still got Ronald Acuna, but I think he got a little dinged up today. He might be out for a couple of days. So they, you know, they're probably being real precautionary with him because he is their their spark plug. He's a, their leadoff guy. And with the on base percentage, slugging percentage that he has and his ability to run. You don't want to risk it with a, a young guy like that. So if they can get a little bit more healthy, get active, uh, as we will see probably here with the rumors and everything will start coming out. They always come out. They, they start coming out in November, the trade rumors and free agent rumors and all that. But it's really going to start heating up within the next three weeks as the deadline starts at the end of July. So, you know, one of the, one of the divisions I think that will be – moving and active is going to be the East and the central and the national league, because the, again, those are the most muddled up um, right now. And in the national league, at least, um, well, all three are kind of, I guess. So I'll retract that statement, but it all, it depends, you know, I, once I get to the uh, a or NL central, I'll explain myself a little bit more on that, but Miami uh, behind Derek Jeter and the rebuild that they're going in through, going through, you know, they had a, a heck of a run last year. Um, despite everything. Uh, but I still think they're two years away from really making a mark. But overall, it is not a super strong division. I think in the next couple of years, you're going to see, unless Philadelphia, New York makes the big moves, Atlanta's going to rise back to the cream of the crop and be dominant year in and year out. And that's Miami's chance to uh, kind of step in there. Washington. This, this could get interesting, too, because Washington is terrible. Uh, seven games back, seven and a half games back, 27 and 35, four and six in our last 10. And they're sitting on Steven Strasburg and, and Max Scherzer. Will they move any of those guys? I don't know. Um, let me write that down. Um, Max and Steven trade date. <laughs> uh, I have to look at their, at, at their uh, remaining contracts to see what they're, what they're worth. I'm assuming that they're paying those guys very, very well, which makes guys like that very hard to move unless you're willing to eat cash for prospects, which Washington might be able to do. Look, they made their run. They won a World Series. It's not like, you know, they have to hang their head about anything. So, uh, and then, you know, they got a fairly new park too. So if you're going to pull the trigger to rebuild and fire a sailor team, now's the time to do it. So we'll see if that comes to fruition or not. But I will, I wrote a note for myself to look up their uh, Matt Scherzer and uh, Steven Strasburg salaries, look at their salaries, look at their age, and, and see how much time they got left and – we shall see, but uh, those are two pieces that people could be looking at. Whether they're movable or or, can't, or will be moved, I don't know yet. Uh, to the NL Central, we have Milwaukee uh, up on top, and I don't know how that's possible because pretty sure they were uh, Cubs were half game back, but whatever. They've gotten hot, real hot, smoking hot. Have the Milwaukee Brewers nine and one in their last ten. Uh, not a uh, a barn burner division by any means, but again, a very competitive division. Milwaukee up uh, up top, thirty eight to twenty seven. The Cubs half game behind them, thirty seven to twenty seven. I swear they tied that up last night when they beat the Cardinals. Cincinnati is thirty two and thirty one, uh, over five hundred, five games back, still within the uh, striking distance. And they're eight and two in their last ten. St. Louis is imploding, and yeah. sorry, not sorry, Cardinals fans, but they are having a rough go of it lately. Uh, two and eight in their last ten. They're five and a half games back. They're still at five hundred thirty-two and thirty-two, but uh, they just got blown out in two games against the Cubs on Friday and Saturday. And the game is actually, I think, already on right now. I just can't believe I haven't gotten an alert or nothing has happened yet. Uh, yeah, game started, so I haven't gotten an alert as to if anything's going on in that game. But St. Louis's pitching is just um. I didn't know this until I watched the series this weekend, but they're deep, deep, deep doo doo. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Cardinals, they uh, they got three guys in the starting rotation on the uh, disabled list right now, and their ace, who's coming back here very shortly, uh, Adam Wainwright, is cruising in on forty years old. So 
unless these young guys get straightened out and they get healthy again real quick, St. Louis might be in, in for a shocker. And then maybe a shocker, I mean, not even contending for the central lead, not even contending for second or third place, being happy to just not be the Pittsburgh Pirates, who yeah. are just terrible. Of course, 14 and 5, 3 and 7 in the last 10, 23 and 41. They are el terrible. Uh, 15, to, 15 games out. That's outrageous. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, and especially in a division that it isn't necessarily um, rife with talent this year. I mean, you know, it's, they've been losing people left and right. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is going to happen is who is going to buy and who's going to sell in the NL Central. Yeah. The Cubs have Javier Baez's contract coming up. They have Alex, um, uh, excuse me, Alex, Chris Bryant, and they have Anthony Rizzo's. Uh, contracts coming up. That is your first baseman, your third baseman, and your shortstop, your infield essentially. Yeah, uh, who do they deal? Who do they keep? Uh, they already tried to do deals with Rizzo and Bryant. Both of those fell through. Um, and if we didn't have 2020, I could probably with a, with a lot of confidence tell you exactly what's going to happen. I can't do that. Because every MLB owner, whether you believe it or not, is running uh, a deficit right now. And a fucking huge one at that. All right? A huge one at that. Because even though they got a third of the season in, which means they at least lost, at least lost two-thirds of their income, right? Even though they prorated all those salaries, they still lost two-thirds of their potential revenue. Now, they got those 60 games in. <clears throat> But they still had to pay electricity. <laughs> they still had to pay um, people to be at that stadium. They still had to pay the front office. They still had to pay scouts. They still had a ton of overhead. And they weren't getting a single dime from the gate. They weren't getting a single dime from concessions. And you're like, oh, that's that much. Well, really, $10 a beer goes a long way. Um, and if somebody buys 10 beers, I mean, just, you know, there's there's sixty thousand people in the stadium, and a third of them drink a beer. That's still a chunk of change, man. And a lot of people don't drink a beer or eat a dog or a brat or a bag of nachos or a thing of nachos or cotton candy or whatever. So I don't know what's going to happen with the Cubs. Um, and this is why contrary because this is a team I watch, this is a team I read about every day, and I think there's a disconnect between the owners and agents and players because. The players still think they're getting the mega deals that they did two years ago. That's not happening. There's no way. At least not this season. I don't think it's possible. So how do you roll the dice as the Cubs? Do you unfire sale your team even though you're technically in first place? Or maybe by the end of the day, you may be in first place by the by the All-Star break, by a margin. So do I hold on to these guys and get knocked out in the first round and the second round of the playoffs? And I lose and get nothing in return. Do I make a concerted effort, bet on the future, sign core guys, whether it be you believe it to be Bryant and Rizzo or Rizzo and Baez. I personally believe it to be uh, Rizzo and Bryant. I think those guys that are heart and soul of the team. I love Javi, but he's just a little unpredictable, and I'm pretty sure I could throw a dead seal six feet above his head and he'd swing at it. That's a problem. <laughs> Plus, the way that guy swing. Yeah, he's still a young guy, but one of these days he's going to swing and he's going to twist himself so hard he's going to break his own back. If you never, if you don't believe me, just go Google Javi Baez swings on YouTube, and you'll see the guy. I mean, you know, he he's just he 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 closes his eyes and swings an awful lot. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> you know, and I guess you can't you can't hit a home run if you don't swing, but it helps to have your eyes open because he swings at pitches six inches off the plate. I don't know what he's doing. And a lot of injuries in the Cubs have allowed fans to see a lot of these guys that were big prospects, but they're coming up and hitting um they're coming up and playing unbelievable baseball. For instance, um Patrick Wisdom. Uh, I think he's had like two appearances in Major League Baseball before this season, right? 
Well, they called him up a couple weeks ago. Guess what his line is? What? He's hitting 347 with eight home runs, 12 RBIs, and 11 runs in 14 games. <laughs> so I think he can he... stay in the minors that long. Uh, well, guess what he plays? Guess what? Guess what position he plays. I have no idea. What? Okay, so Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo play third base and first base, right? Yeah. So I'll give you a 50-50 chance. Flip a coin. Where do you think he plays? Who is the 2015 Rookie of the Year, 2016 uh, 2016 MVP? Chris Bryant, right? So guess yeah. what Patrick Wisdom plays? I, third base. Yeah. You're going to call a guy up when you got a, a Major League Rookie of the Year, Major League uh, NL MV, or Major League MVP up? You're going to call him up? No. He's going to no. sit there. You're going to try and deal him, possibly, maybe. But if not, you're going to keep him there. So, you know, that's why I don't get too, like, uh, into who's got the best, who's got the most prospects, because prospects are bullshit. With the exception of a few of them, it's very rare these guys – it's just no different than the NFL or NBA, all right? You've got that elite class of, like, 10 guys, right, that are more than likely to become great, great MLB players. But in actuality – Maybe 30% of those that top 10 actually make it to the major leagues early and make an impact and continue it throughout their career. Most guys, it, a lot of guys take a little bit of time to make that jump from high school or college, learn how to be a pro, learn to hit on godly breaking stuff, all that other stuff. So this guy was just sitting in the wings playing great triple A ball. Nobody's paying attention to him because he doesn't, his last name isn't Tatis or yeah. Guerrero or Acuna or one of the other baby, uh, baby Hall of Famers. So yeah, and there's there's several guys that come up with the Cubs this year who are absolutely just ripping it, and so it makes the situation even more confusing because these guys are coming up. Can you unload all those guys? Uh, can you hold them for a year and hope to go to the World Series? Uh, do you go after one more run and go after some, maybe another arm? Probably the Cubs more than anything need another number one starting pitcher, which, you know, Kyle Hendricks has been great this year. Hell, he's been great over the last five years. However, he's a soft tossing control guy and he doesn't really, he should strike fear, but he doesn't. What I'm saying, and I think a lot of people would agree with me in the biz would be um, that they need another arm. Only problem being it's going to cost you an arm and a leg to get one, and do the Cubs have that ammunition uh, in the uh, ready to fire? I don't think they do. I think they're worried about payroll right now. I think everybody is worried about payroll right now. So, I don't know. I think it's either going to be – it's not going to be your usual trade deadline. I think it's not going to be kind of, well, you know, we kind of expected this. We kind of expected that. I don't think anybody knows what the fuck's going to happen because yeah. nobody is – quite grasp the effects of the 2020 season on baseball and the pandemic pandemic um so it's gonna be interesting to see i really 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 don't know i want the cubs to go after another arm but like again can they i i don't see the prospects or the ammunition or the money they would need to go out and get somebody like a steven strasberg like a uh uh matt scherzer or somebody else say you know you never want to deal with in your division it's kind of a no-no right but um you know my you know like i said I, that's the reason i mentioned washington because they're just yeah they're so far down they might listen to offers uh you're not probably gonna get anything out of the west so you might want to turn your eyes to the, to the american league minnesota is is right for the picking baltimore is as well um you know <laughs> seattle uh, king hernandez would they be willing to part with him? Maybe, but they're probably going to ask too much, and the Cubs are going to say, kick rocks. We're, we're not going to cough that up for that. And a lot of teams are. So, Eugene Naud. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, brother. I love your uh, your Facebook profile picture, though. Tread on those who tread on you. Fuck yeah. All the Cardinals do it. Not good. Terrible. <laughs> El Terrible, bro. Very terrible. Sorry you're a Cardinals fan. I'm sorry you are born one, probably. Uh, may God have mercy on your soul and nominate Pache Spirit Santos. Uh, but 
I'm a Cubs fan, so I'm not gonna feel that bad for you, brother. Uh, <laughs> but they are playing. They are playing. The Redbirds are playing the uh, the Cubbies right now. I'm just trying to look to see. If, Bill uh, zip, I have zip I think. What's that? I think it's still zip zip. Yeah, it looks like it. I haven't gotten an alert that they scored or anything. So, yeah. but thanks for tuning, Eugene. I appreciate it, man. But the, yeah, uh, that about wraps it up for me as far as baseball. Um, some NFL. He still haven't told me why my Reds are still in third place. Because they play in a park that you could trip and hit a home run out of. <laughs> well, here, look, well, well, look, look, well, you know, here, let, I'll tell you why. Here's one of the reasons. Are you ready? Sure, give it to me. Guess who leads the? Uh, these are stat leaders of MLB. This is all MLB. I don't, I don't mess around. I don't want to go through both NL and AL. So I just go through the whole Major League Baseball. So let me take this shot real quick. Um. Who's got the uh, the Reds have got good hit they had two two good hitters, but they got good hitters all over the place, but they play in a fan box, which means that, you know you get a lot of home runs, you get a lot of deep balls. Um granted it works both ways for works uh, both ways for any teams that play there, but yeah, Nick Nick Castellanos, three sixty one, JC Winkler, three forty four. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., 344, Michael Brantley, uh, Houston, 337, Adam Fraser, 336 in Pittsburgh. Uh, that's probably a guy that's going to get traded almost doubtedly. It's going to be Adam Frazier. Uh, having a hell of a season down there in Pittsburgh, we know the people to do so and because uh, they're just a woefully awful team. But I think, you know, how do I put this? Average, below average teams – a lot of times that have good offenses will have good first, third, and half seasons. And then it absolutely goes away after that. It completely implodes because they wear out their bullpens and they they, they just they just can't compete. Um, do I wish the Reds luck? Yes, as long as they're not playing the Cubs. <laughs> they can beat the breaks off of the rest of the NL Central and anybody else we play. I don't really care. But, um, yeah, I'm fine with it. I, I just think they're a really, really good hitting team. And, look, <laughs> how do you make money as a small market team in, a, in, in Major League Baseball? You build a small stadium, you build a small field, surround it by a big stadium that you can pack a lot of people into, and you get a really good young offensive team anchored by, like, one or two veterans. Because people love hits, people love home runs, people love to think they're always in the game. And what's the most expensive commodity in baseball? I don't know. You tell me. Pitching. Okay. Starting pitching is insanely expensive. Insanely compared to what you get out of it. Okay. So you get, say, 30 starts from a pitcher. And you pay him, just for sake of argument, you pay him $30 million a year, right? Yeah. You're only getting 30 games. That's still 132 games without him, right? Right. You pay your first and third baseman combined $40 million. But you get 143 games, 145 games out of him. So your money goes a lot longer a lot, a lot further with offense. Uh, pitching is extremely expensive, uh, especially starting pitching is very, very expensive. And closers are the most. Some people would argue me, with me about this, but they are the most overpaid <laughs> players in Major League Baseball. Because think about it: if a guy is awesome and he gives you fifty-two saves, that means maybe he dropped eight. That means he played. 60 games. Yeah. But you paid him $20 million a year to fucking do that. Yeah. So, again, it's very expensive. It's not over the – you can't look at it just over the course of a season as far as – um, you have to look at it as it, how much you get for your money per game. And pitching is really expensive. So, if you want to have a, a above-average um, mid-market team – you, what you have to do is roll your dice, draft and scout a lot of young bats, really good hitters, for two reasons. One, it, it gives you a chance to be in more games than you should be, 
win a lot more games than you should. And it also gives you a tremendous amount of uh, tradeability, if that's a word. Because people with, people with good pitching are always looking for good bats, good yeah. young bats that they can control for a long time at a very low price. So um, pitching leaders, uh, as far as wins, Aaron uh, Savale, uh, is it? yeah, Savale, yeah, nine wins. Uh, Julio Urias, uh, who, ugh, he's nasty, nine with the uh, Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw, eight with the Dodgers. Kyle Hendricks, eight with the uh, Chicago Cubs. And Jack Flaherty with eight with the St. Louis Cardinals. Home runs, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., 21 home runs. Fernando Tatis Jr., who hit a grand slam today and watched it for about 30 seconds. He's probably going to get hurt next. Uh, but he's got 19 home runs. Ronald Acuna Jr., who's a leadoff hitter, by the way, 18 home runs. Jesse Winkler of Cincinnati, 17. Shohani Otani. Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, the dual threat from out east, who pitches and when he's not pitching, he hits designated hitter. This is what's great about him. When he's pitching, he just hits in the lineup. You get to bring up another bat. When he's not pitching, he is the bat. That's just yeah. insane. Uh just nuts. And I I uh, I used to be very critical of him, but I think his problem was is like almost every other young stud baseball player, he doesn't know when to say, hey, I'm hurt. I need to shut it down. Especially, it's hard to – can you imagine t telling your boss, hey, you know, my shoulder's feeling like kind of uh today. I, I had a really long throw. Uh, just didn't feel good. I think I'm going to shut it down for a couple of days. You know I'm paying you $25 million, right? Yes, sir. I'll be on the field. Like it's got to be a little hard, right? A little bit, right? You got a good work ethic. You got a good core. You're going to tell your boss you got to shut it down for a few days, and he's going to pay you, like, what? I don't know, a couple hundred thousand dollars to sit on your ass? It's got to be a little tough. I can, I, I can see that kind of look at uh, it. And you want to be a tough guy. You know, you're in the bigs. You're supposed to rub some dirt on it and whatnot. But that's what gets you in more and more and more trouble and gets you hurt more and more and more. Trust me, I know. Not that I did it at that level. I'm just saying, I, I know. Ignoring injuries, uh, <laughs> even if you get away with it, guess what? It's going to come back and get you eventually. It always comes back and gets you. Uh, earned run average, Jason DeGrom, who I talked about at length earlier, 0 0.56 ERA. That's just, what? <laughs> Dude, we're all, it's almost the all-star break. We got a month, and you're gonna, ugh, you haven't hit one yet? That's stupid. Lance Lynn, 1.23 for the Chicago White Sox. Kevin Gosman, 1.43. For the uh, San Francisco Giants, Brandon Woodruff of Milwaukee at 1.52. Uh, he's another guy just looks like, uh, like, what are you doing up there, bro? Like, you don't even look like you belong up there. And he just slings just nasty, sh savage shit every time he's up. So, you know, Pierce is hard to see. Him. And Carlos Rondo, no, Chicago White Sox at 1.89. Notice a lot of these league leaders, <laughs> they play for the same teams. It's weird. Um, uh, run bad is in Vladimir Guerrero Jr., whose father met a pitch he couldn't hit. In fact, hitting a home run off a ball bounced 55 feet from the plate. Well, it bounced at 55 feet, it didn't bounce 55 feet from the plate, but <laughs> really? he still what hit a home run off a ball that hit the ground. All right, that's, <laughs> that's the genes that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. comes from. Like, oh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was the worst thing to happen to uh, junior high, junior or middle school. Legion ball and high school baseball coaches ever. Vladimir Jr. was the worst thing to ever happen to those coaches because we'd watch guys like Vladimir, Vladimir Guerrero hit those balls, the bounce and hit him from a home run, or you know, a fastball that was like at your chin. He just he knew it was coming, he just hack at it, bang, gone. And so, every we look at that, well, he could do it, we could do it. No, no, he's a, what we call an outlier, he's that one percent of guys in the world that can do that. But that's the genes that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. comes from. Of course, his mother as well. I'm sure contributed. I, I wouldn't doubt if all at all if his mother was an athlete as well. I really wouldn't. But he's got 21 home runs. Fernando Tatis Jr. 19. Ronald Cooney Jr. 18. Winkler 17. Sean Tani 17. Uh, runs batted in. Weird. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. 55. Jesse Aguilera 49. Uh, run out the bottom. Awesome medals. Tap at 48. Saves Mark Melancon 19 for San Diego. Liam Hendricks with the White Sox 17. There are those White Sox. Now, here's a good sign for me. Craig Kimbrell of the Chicago Cubs 17. Josh Hader 
God, that's a great name. Ah, I just love that name. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, he's a left-headed, flame-throwing freak. Uh, he's 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 fun to watch as long as he's not trying to close against the Cubs because I usually just turn the freaking phone off or the TV off because he is that filthy. Uh, Alex Reyes is of St. Louis. You know, poor St. Louis. That guy he pitched last night. Hadn't pitched in nine days. You imagine having your closer not pitch in nine games? Yeah. Oh, you know you're having a rough go of it at that point, right? Yeah, I would think uh, so. But, yeah, the Cardinals, yeah, they're, they're, he came in last night, and he just looked like shit. You could tell he had pitched in nine games. He just couldn't hit the strike zone. Uh, he did, and eventually calmed down and kind of dialed in. But I was like, oh, you need to get him in more often than that. Like, Christ. Uh, hits Adam Fraser of Pittsburgh, who I mentioned earlier about being big-time trade bait. Um, 85. Don't be surprised if, if the if the Reds don't unload some people. I mean, why wouldn't you? Seriously, why wouldn't you? For some pitching prospects, I'd unload that whole team right now. But, you know, I don't really care about the Reds, so don't listen to me about that. But uh, Nick Castellanos has got 84. Cedric Mullen, 78. Strikeout leader Shane Bieber. Weird. Uh, the Cleveland Indians. That guy's just a strikeout machine. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes being a strikeout pitcher leads you to having some really bad games, and he's had a couple of those this year where he just uh, – problem with being a strikeout pitcher is you throw a lot of pitches, and managers and analytic guys in front office don't like that too much anymore. It also leads you to walk a lot more guys, and if all of a sudden you just lose your control out of nowhere or start without it, it's either going to be a short day or a very brutal day for you. So – Everybody loves the flamethrowers and loves to see the strikeout, but to me, they're a little boring. They're a little fascist. I like some ground balls. Mix it up. You know what I mean? Uh, Garrett Cole, New York Yankees, 113 Ks. Zach Wheeler of the Philadelphia Phillies, 112. And Trevor Bauer of the Los Angeles Dodgers, uh, 111. Stolen bases, the lost art of the stolen base. Although some teams are still a lot like the Cubs, the San Diego Padres. Individually, eh, it's kind of meh. Uh, the closest guy probably to come to 30-30 in a while, Fernando Tartis Jr., he sits at the bottom with 13 stolen bases. Whit Merrifield at top with 17. Quality starts, Trevor Bauer with 11. Now, what's a quality start? Quality start is six innings pitch with three or less earned runs. That would be called unacceptable probably 30 years ago, but today it's a quality start. But Trevor Bauer leads the field with 11. Brandon Woodruff with 11. Shane Bieber with 11. Kyle Gibson, Texas with 10. And Zach Wheeler of the Philadelphia Phillies with 10. All right. So that wraps up just about everything. Uh, we've got a few rumors to talk about here at NFL. Um, nothing going so far as far as the Aaron Rodgers um, fiasco. <laughs> Packers they president figured it out. No, Packers <laughs> president Matt, Mark Murphy called Aaron Rodgers a complicated fellow, which is a nice way of calling him a fucking asshole. Um, Aaron played this thing the whole all the way wrong, in my opinion. Um, uh, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. You know, you only know so much sitting in this seat or sitting in anybody's seat. I don't care if you're ESPN, CBS, Fox News, Barstool, Bleacher Report. I don't give a shit. You're not sitting there in the room. You're not a fly on the wall. So to consider them experts anymore to me, I don't know. Maybe they got a little bit more context, a little more information. Maybe they're banging one of the cheerleaders who tweet some updates as they come through her locker room. But um, it seems that like either Aaron Rodgers went through the process and went through the chain of command or he didn't. If he did and he's going off like this, I got his back. If he didn't and he's going off like this, I don't have his back. I don't know the man. All I can comment on is, comment on is the optics and optics make Aaron Rodgers look a bit like a bitch they also make the Green Bay Packers look a little bitch but what are you going to do your star guy calls out your GM what are you going to do because they've set a horrible precedent and other teams have done it and it didn't go well for them do you run your GM out of town for your star guy who's maybe got two or three years left Maybe, maybe more. I don't know. But it sets the precedent for your franchise that any guy coming in who's your star guy, who the press deems is your dude, can de facto run the team. Can you let that happen? It depends, on your, you it, it, it depends on your priorities. Yeah. Uh, do you want to win right now? Then the answer is yes. 
do you want to win consistently in the future? Then the answer, I think, is no. Um, I think Aaron Rodgers set himself a fair was set, set himself up for failure by saying that if he does not get this guy doesn't get fired, he gets help, he's gonna retire. Well, yeah. that's fucking stupid. One, you're throwing a shit ton of money away. Well, he they and that's the thing you he doesn't care about money. No, he has more money than he can ever he can ever do anything with. Yeah, but ninety more million dollars are still ninety more million dollars, right? That doesn't matter to him. Mm -hmm. See, that, that's you get to a point where it is not money anymore, and if you don't care about it, you don't consider it. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it it's just like what, what Brett went through. What's up, Bob Jordan? <laughs> nice to see you, brother. Thanks for tuning in, man. I mean, you know, look what what Brett Favre went through when he went retired or got yeah. moved. Or, I mean, it, it was all crazy. And Brett did what he did because he loved the competition. Yeah. Uh, I, I think Aaron Rodgers done it because he felt, and, and I think rightfully so to a certain extent, the Packers haven't helped him out. I get, he said, you know, he made a comment. He says, you know, it isn't about Jordan Love. That's fine. But the problem is, well, that's fine. But the problem is, is you had many opportunities to either trade with that pick and help me with three or four guys than to trap that guy. This, that year now but the Packers are going bro we don't know how long you're going to be here you get hurt every couple of years and seriously at that especially in the later stage of your career we need a guy remember this guy named Brett Favre who we drafted when we drafted you how upset he was because he was getting hurt he was out we knew he had a shoulder thing <clears throat> we had to get somebody in here in case you went he went completely down that guy was you bro then we let him go a whole controversy behind that and now, you know, years later, we're back. We're facing the same decision. You know, no team, no good franchise wants to be caught with their pants down. And if you just ride the sunset out with Rodgers and don't put anybody or at least try to put somebody or try and find somebody that's going to replace him in a couple of years, then you're failing as a franchise, failing as a front office, right? So I think everybody's wrong and nobody wants to admit it and nobody can afford to. And I'm almost upset at, at Rodgers because I think he's barking up the wrong tree. I understand his grievances as a player winning the MVP and then not getting any help, it, winning the Super Bowl, not, not getting any help behind him as far as, you know, but how much do you need? How, how much help does he need? I mean, he's been in the NFC Championship. He went to the NFC Championship last year. How much more do you need? How much more? You got a pretty good running back core. It, it, it didn't show up in the NFC Championship game, unfortunately, but that's because all they had to do was cover De Devontae Adams and, and they could stack eight in the box. They could they could double team Adams. They didn't have to worry about anybody else. So I, I get his point as far as that. Like, I need another number one receiver. Antonio Brown was out there floating in the wind. And I bet you if Aaron Rodgers called him up, Last year when he was in all that trouble, hey, come to the Packers. It's cold, but free beer and brats and <laughs> big chicks and sweaters. You know, I mean, we got it all here, man. Um, I don't know. It, 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 it's it's just going to fold as it unfolds, and I just hope he comes back. Uh, I hope they come to some reasonable reconciliation, maybe renegotiate his contract, get him some help somewhere somehow, and – let him play out that contract and then put Jordan Love in there once it's over with. But I don't know. I, 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 I'm still, I'm just disappointed that contracts don't mean anything anymore. Um, oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you know, they thought they solved that when they redid the uh, rookie contracts, but yeah. I think they actually made it worse because for a select few of players, because, the stars, the guys are going to be stars that come in and they sign those rookie deals. They're a little bent when they come into the league. They go out and they prove themselves. Now they've got the head without the money, and they want the money. And they're going to want a lot of it. And that puts teams in a bind. So, you know, just like politicians, you do one good thing and you don't anticipate the after effects. And you then you got to fix that. And you're constantly just chasing your damn tail or being the little Dutch boy just sticking your fingers in every freaking hole, trying to keep the whole thing from crumbling down on top of you. So <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but I hope the Packers straighten it out. Any other, um, let's see here. Interesting. Um, do, 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 do. Any interesting. Um, T 
to well here let's let's look at this here which nfl teams had the best and worst off seasons huh. if it'll ever come up there we go oh worst team was uh the houston texans go figure that's a dysfunctional franchise oh go figure green bay packers with the second worst um offseason air rogers kenny main tribute added more fuel to the nfl's defining offseason story this potential era ending impasse between an mvp and management towards everything else packers presently rogers has seen Peers franchises cater to them and build several rosters through various means. Tom Brady's Buccaneers with Lambeau Field is a key backdrop. Use the latest such plan to win a title. The less flexible Packers did well to resign Aaron Jones, but non greedy residents would be wise to read up on his franchise's 20 plus years between Bart Starr and Brett Favre. The Packs astray at QB's 1970s may be relevant again soon. Ooh, that's not, that's not a, a ooh, that's not good. Uh, the Raiders had the third worst offseason. Steelers, Tennessee Titans, Eagles, Saints. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do? You know, your guy, your guy takes off, and uh, yeah, you're kind of left like, oh, it's a guy we're gonna do it. But uh, why the Falcons may need to trade the best player, uh, in his team history, to escape cap hell. Saints GM Mickey Loomis deserved at least a certificate for escaping a hundred million dollar plus cap hole. Carving up space of franchise tag Marcus Williams. That said, the Saints roster looks worse than the start stack squads from 2017 to 2020. New Orleans all in move and Drew Brees twilight years backfired. Thanks in part to officiating. <laughs> yeah. And several pieces, uh, including Brees are gone. Shane Payton's work with uh, Taysom Hill and or Jameis Winston will be fascinating. All right, let's not kid yourself. Stop hamming on Jameis Winston. Just because he's black doesn't mean you have to talk about him. He's garbage. He should have chose baseball. He didn't. He's an idiot. Move on from the guy. He's terrible. He's literally thrown almost twice as many interceptions as touchdowns. He's a joke, and the only reason you keep talking about him is because you want to be woke. Stop it. He's a freaking bust. If there ever was one, he is a bust. Dallas Cowboys come in there in the uh, <clears throat> top seven of worst. Then the Jets, well, you know, weird. Jaguars. I don't see the drag. They drafted Trevor Lawrence. I mean, eesh. I mean, yeah, he may have to come up with a bad plan. Or Urban Meyer's definitely got his work cut out for him, but don't cut count Urban Meyer out. That guy, hmm. Look, you're you've been terrible for a few years. You're gonna be terrible for a couple more if you can keep Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence healthy and build that team up. You could be there in two or three years, or three years at the max, two years the minimum. So don't don't you know don't freak out Jaguar fans how all five of you um New York Giants yeah yeah Minnesota Vikings yeah they had some decent picks but Carolina Panthers uh they're still in it for the Deshaun Watson sweet states which isn't over yet uh Cincinnati Bengals yeah I don't know didn't do a hell of a lot to back up that um that guy with the blown out knee what was his name oh I forget. Uh, who cares? She's probably going to be nothing anyways. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it's just the guy ripped his entire knee apart. All right. It, it, it's a uh, former LSU quarterback. It, it, he was amazing until he got hurt. Uh, Seahawks, Washington football team. I think they're sticking with it, and I love it. Uh, the Falcons. Let's go all the way down. Colts, Lions, Broncos, Cardinals. Let's go to who had the best. Let's go to the top five. Miami Dolphins having a, apparently a good offseason, good draft, good free agents. Baltimore Ravens in there as well. Chargers, good for them. Cleveland Browns, I like to hear this. It's my that's my AFC team. Uh, this could be the best Browns roster since the fumble 34 years ago after ranking 25th in defensive and defense overall last year. Cleveland addressed most deficiencies without overspending. John Johnson, a 11.25 million per year is a bargain. Rams mate Troy Hill. Adds to a corner crew. They have Greed Williams. That's a great name for a freaking corner. Greedy. What's your name, bro? Greedy. I love it. I love it. All right. First rounder, Craig Newsom, defensive tackle, Malik Johnson, and Anthony Walker. Uh, and Miles Garrett, and of course, playing opposite Miles Garrett could be a pretty nice career trampoline. The Browns return all 11 offensive starters. Good for them. Of course. It's about horrible. Uh, here comes uh, Darth Vader. 
But uh, yeah, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Antichrist, otherwise known as Tom Brady. They were lucky on the injury front last year to employ soon-to-be 44-year-old quarterback. But this will be the offseason by which Super Bowl champions are measured. No Super Bowl champ has brought back its entire lineup. The Bucs re-signed a historic glut of free agents and kept their top bench cogs. Tampa Bay deviated from a signing both averse ways and went into the void year realm to keep Tom Brady's team together while adding Giovanni Bernard. Ooh. Uh, Pops, do you know Giovanni Bernard? No. Why? why would he I? is a kind of a little bit smaller than Bernie Sanders type back. Played for the really? Cincinnati Bengals for like six years. Um, probably one of the best unknown third down backs of all time. Um, he is not a ground and pounder, 35 carry type game guy, but more like kind of the chiefs do it with a couple guys. He's kind of the, your second guy where you run screens with them. You run, um, reverses options, um, kind of RPOs with them. Cause he's a tiny, hard to see little scatty guy. But as soon as he goes North South, I mean, just, it's like, wow. Yeah. He has smoke just coming off his heels. It's amazing. And <laughs> nobody's heard of him. Because he plays for Cincinnati. Now, right. why have I heard of him? Because I watched the Bengals because my wife's a Cincinnati through and through chick. And <laughs> probably her least admiring quality. but um, And there's few of them, but that's one of them for sure. But I but I know a lot of Cincinnati players, and he is he is quite uh, the breakout artist. And he, 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 he'll, he'll juke you out of your shoes for sure. So he's a better find than Andy Dalton was for the Bears. Oh yeah! Oh, Andy <laughs> Dalton's gonna he's going to Chicago. This is what Andy Dalton's gonna do. Uh, he's gonna throw. Well, if he went for a full season, twenty touchdowns, twenty five interceptions. Because he's only got one guy to throw to, yeah. Allen Robinson. That's it. Uh, so you know, it, it's it's Chicago's just a, one of those just. I'm sorry, Bears fans, but uh, it's a broken franchise, and if you want to fix it, come up with $500 million and buy the team because that's the only way you're going to do it. Uh, oh, yeah. It's a broken franchise. It, it's, who, it's, own, who owns Bears I, I do not know. I, I, I would suspect it's still uh, descendants of the Hallis family, um, but I will find out for you. Oops. It's not Chicago Bears, it's Chicago Bears. There we go. <laughs> that helps. See, I can't even type in proper English after a couple of years. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's still the Hallis family. Oh, really? All right. Yeah, it's still Virginia, who's like 4,000 years old. Right. Um, And that, unfortunately, I'm sure Virginia is a wonderful woman. She certainly looks like she is. Uh, you know, how you just look at somebody, you know, they're having fun, having a good time and just love life and they're just all in it, but I don't think she has much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just don't put a microphone in front of her. All right. Um, yeah, but no, she, she's a very nice lady. Actually, uh, now I think about it, I looked at a couple articles and, and she's, yeah, but I think as a case of absentee, absentee landlordship, uh, I think she Cashes the checks. I don't know. I don't know enough about them, but I know that the, the front office is broken. When a team is that bad for that long, now don't say, "Oh, we were in the playoffs a couple of years ago." That every team does that every like ten years. Yeah. Even the bad ones, they make it in every once in a while. They just get a luck of a one or two good players enough to carry into the wild card, knocked out in the first round. That is not a good team. Good teams are the, the Packers, <laughs> as of right now. Yeah. Steelers. Uh, I guess you could throw the Chiefs in there now. Um. You used to be the Cowboys, but you know, you have your thoroughbred teams, your blue chip teams. They seem to kind of find themselves in a position to win every year, and they're not one of them. The Bears haven't been and haven't been for a very long time. So, you know, they're coming up on 40 years yeah. for their Super Bowl. So, and Dicka's, you know, I don't know. Take it, free, cryogenically freeze them, take some of his mojo, eject it in the next coach. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but they're they're just not in it anymore, and that's unfortunate because it's a very proud city with a proud. Uh, well, that, that's uh, sport that's the amazing part is that it, it, that's a strong city, mm -hmm. but, but like all big cities, they got their problems. Not the same problem the New York Yankees had. So. I think I think Chicago might have sold, sold the devil because they can they only seem to have one good team at a time. Yeah. You ever notice that? 
in all sports, <clears throat> it's either the Cubs one year, then next year it's the White Sox, next year it's the Blackhawks. Um, then the, the, the Bulls. Bulls have have a good run, but it's not. It's never two or three of them together at one time. It always seems to be like just one a pop. So. I mean, I wish the Bears the best of luck. I have a lot of uh, friends that are Bears fans, you know, but it's just sorry. It, with except, you know, and who knows what's going to happen with the Packers? That, that this may be the Packers time to to completely. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, it, it really really depends if if this new kid is going to be any good. If Aaron Rodgers does not stick around, so. Hey Julie, what's going on? Hey Gene Wasberg, how you doing, brother? Hey Eugene, how Bob Jordan? And my wife she's in there. She's saying hi to Julie. I miss you, little Julie. Little Julie Spud, you're awesome. Uh, better see you in the bar next Wednesday. Uh, I could use your help for sure. But you call uh, it the Ford Effect. I'm wondering what that was. <laughs> oh, oh, it's <laughs> that, 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 that owns the D- Detroit Lions. Oh, the, all right. uh, the Ford family. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> Too bad they invested that team when they had the money to do so. Oops. Too soon? Oh, <laughs> uh, God, trying to find a motor plant in Flint or Detroit is, uh, I don't know, like trying to find Helen Keller in a black room. Um, it's just not working. Uh, you know, going back to Packers, so we don't know anything about Jordan Love. However, this this is the scary thing that I do know is, is that the front office of the Packers, multiple front office people come on and say that Jordan Love was ready to play on day one and we were and complete confidence of them, which yeah, tells they, a person lost, like me. They lost their, their star center. They lost their star center, and yeah, they didn't but, replace him. Yeah. That's what I, you know, how do you do that? Yeah. Well, it, you guys got to go, and you, you, you lose pieces no matter what you do, usually, unless you're Tampa Bay. Um, but Your center is center. I mean, that, yeah, that's... but centers is as huge as people think it is. He's really not that critical of a position. It's really not. All he's got to do is snap and go forward. Um, they you don't normally have the biggest guy lined up. He normally doesn't have anybody lined up right against him unless he's facing the three four. And either way, he's got help to the left and to the right. Um, it's not as huge a big deal as it is say a left tackle. Um, it's gonna hurt, but. Do you have faith in the franchise that the guy that they're going to play him with is going to be as good or coachable up? You know, and like I, a point I was trying to get at about Jordan Love is that everybody's come out defensive in the front office and he's ready to play day one. Well, he either is or they're saying that because they have to. Well, I, you know, to be honest with you, they have to say that because they grabbed him and yeah. they're saying we're going to play. Uh, and if they don't say that, it weakens their position with Rodgers, right? It obviously weakens it, so you're you're in a pinch there as well. So be, <laughs> I hate it. I hate I, I it. Just hate, I just hate to see the Packers finally, you know, doing well and and then and just screwing themselves up, and, and they manage to do that quite frequently. Yeah, they always see. You know, look, we've been. Uh, Gene says it's the Vikings to win this year. Well, we shall see. Uh, did you get rid of Kirk Cousins? Because if you did, it's not your year to win. I'm being honest, Gene. I'm being honest. That guy is Jay Cutler in purple and white. All right? He really is. He's a gunslinger. Yes. Um, And is he capable? Yeah. But he makes far too many mistakes. And that team is too flawed um, to me to take for me to take them seriously. Now, I say that now without a game being played. And look, in two months, 60 days, the season starts. Well, it, preseason starts. So, um, which I pay about as much attention to as I do um, Karen's at the, at, uh, the Starbucks. I, I, I don't still don't understand the preseason, to be perfectly honest with you, anymore. Well, they've, been screwing, they've been screwing around with that so bad. Well, initially, I think it was a cash grab. Um, and it was an excuse to weed out guys. Yeah. I think you could do that without putting the guys in game situations. Um, I say you cut it down to inner inner scrimmages, intramural scrimmages, and you have one preseason game, and you match up every year. You match up with the the you create the best matchups you can in NFL across uh, conferences and divisions. 
and then you next week you go straight into the regular season. I think preseasons are just a, a waste of time. Uh, you can get all the hits in and all, everything in a controlled environment in practices and in, in intramural or inter-squad games. And if you're going to add another game to the season, then you should at least subtract two, if not three, preseason games. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah. It's going to be interesting for the NFL in the next couple of years because they're still coming out of COVID. They're still dealing with the kneeling shit. They're still dealing with a lot of other stuff. Uh, nobody still knows what a fucking catch is. And uh, now you can't uh, object. I think they revoked the ability for you to contest a, a pass interference call again. So guess what's going to happen this year in a playoff game? <laughs> pass interference call. Guaranteed. It's guaranteed yeah. to happen because they took it away. And somebody's going to miss a call. And, uh, you know, people ask me about, would you be upset about robo uh, umpires? Nope. Not at all. I at last have a true strike zone instead of, oh, I got to adjust to your strike zone. I mean, it was funny sometimes in semi pro <clears throat> when I'd ask, you know, hey, Blue, what's up, 2 7? What's the, uh, what's the uh, strike zone? Nose to toes, east to west, baby, swing away. It's hot out here. Like, fuck. Really? Okay. So, you know. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if NFL will ever go robo, but I know MLB is getting very, 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 very close to robo. So I, I'm not sure of the, of the technology for a clone. Well, they're, clone. they're using it right now to evaluate them. So, yeah. My problem is, is that the, the home plate, it, it's, it's an unusual character dimensions. Sure. And so it, as long as the ball passes through home plate at some point, mm. it's a strike. As long as it touches the white, yes. Yeah, the, it passes through that zone. Yeah. The problem is it, it, that, that's a deep zone. It, it's a couple feet, not a couple feet, but what, 16 inches from the front of the plate to the back? That sounds about right. I could look it up if you want, but that sounds yeah, about right. No, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it, 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 it's, it's a rectangle. And how do you how do you define the rectangle uh, that passes through that zone? It's just, it's a well, it's a multifaceted geometrical problem because you got a flat space, right? Uh, that's white. That's the home plate. Now people think, oh, it hit the black. There's a black trimmer on the home plate. Black don't count. Black is there right. to distinguish the white from right. the, from anything else. Um, uh, hold on a second. And then you've got to contemplate the geometry between home plate's reference to uh, the hitter, which is generally right. speaking yeah. right about yeah, that's, that's, the that's, letters you're, you're, to, you're, to the knee. Uh, I, yeah. the height of it. So uh, let's look at this. All right. So uh, baseline is 60 feet. Yep. Home plate to second base. Home, where are the dimensions of home plate? Okay. So. Dimensions of home plate are 17 inches or 43 centimeters across the front, 8.5 inches. That's the the inward part, 22 right. centimeters down each side, with a triangular rear of two sides of 12 inches, 30 centimeters. The rear edges are 45 degree angles to the side. So, boom! Right. You ever been to boot camp? Feet at 45 degree angle. That is the point from which you start the strike zone from the umpire's view. Goes out a 45 degree angle. All right, for 12 inches. Each side, then it box goes straight for about mm, three inches, I think it is, and then you've got that front that is 17 inches. So you yeah. take that into account, plus the batter from about God, I really should look this up, but basically below the letters to the top of the knee. So I think your computer is more than capable of doing that. In well, fact, uh, no, no, I know here, it. Is. Here's the problem: is how did you? How do you picture it? How do you project where it is? Well, I think you have to use multiple. Well, they're trying to do it now, and they have been doing it for a while. You use multiple cameras at different angles, different heights around the ballpark, and that's how you get, you know, Fox, uh, Marquee, whatever local uh, Fox Sports thing is covering the game. They have that box over there, and I'm sure you know they have the little box. Right. You know, they have the, the the over the right shoulder, over the left shoulder view of the pitcher, and 
I see a lot of umpires holding consistent strike zones this year, but not the strike zone. Like you get a guy that will always call a ball two inches off the plate to the left or the right, right all day long. He calls it all day long. I'm fine if he does it all day long, but would it be better if it was just the strike zone in the game? Brian, what I'm saying is that they they project that box. Yeah. That box is only two dimensions. True. All right. How do you project a three dimensional box? Mm, Good question. That's the the problem that I just haven't been able to get my hands around. Where's Neil Grass Tyson when you need him? Seriously, where is this guy? No. <laughs> we need to get Neil deGrasse Tyson some astrophysics on this shit because I want baseball fixed, damn it. I'm sick of unruly um, umpires determining the outcome of games. I mean, I, 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 I mean I'm, I'm sitting there thinking of, of they, they got to have a receiver somewhere above home plate. Yeah. <laughs> and they're shooting beans from the plates up to there. <laughs> I, use, I don't know. It's... It, I just, I just think the, the the robo thing is is way far away because that, that the dimensions of the strike zone are just outrageous and they change. So how do you adjust the change? So well, yeah, that, that's you know, it get to another point about baseball is yeah, yeah, it, they do change. MLB actually does change the strike zone from time to time. They do it. They're notorious for doing. It. What they're also notorious doing is. Um, this is what I find funny. And somebody brought this up last week, and I can't remember who it was. And I'm sorry I forgot your name because you're a very important person in baseball, and I can't remember your name. But they've been going after pitchers now, right, about yeah. illegal substances. You know, never did that. I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea. I have never put four substances on a ball ever on my neck, you know what? You know what under, the on my table. I have no idea. So but, I, yeah. but I still think it's so amazing is that, it's so easy for a catcher to put foreign systems on the ball and go back to the pitcher. It is. I've never it seen is. anybody challenge a catcher. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I, I think it'd be, I think it'd be uh, pretty easy, uh, especially because catchers are so apt to um, give up a ball. Yeah. You know, if it hits the dirt, whatever, or right. uh, you know, they just, you know, they just reach back and you know, they get another ball. Um, that would be the time to do it. Uh, you could put it in your glove. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It would be so simple, and I've never seen anybody challenge the catcher when something going on with the ball. So yeah. I don't know. There, I, I know guys have done. It. I know guys have done it with um, they kind of square out on their um, or, or not a square, but like a little rectangular hole yeah. right next to their seam, mm-hmm. and uh, they'll cut it out they'll slide in a little piece of um fine grit sandpaper some type of emery board right and then they'll they'll put that piece back out and cut a smaller piece off of that so you got about maybe about that much yeah showing and they'll spray paint it as best they can to the color of their mitt and then they catch it they'll come and they'll grab it and they'll scratch it on a seam or something and I'll throw it back out there. And, uh, yeah, that's how catchers get away with it. But, yeah, every, look, people are cheating. It's just, it's baseball. It's sports. They're, they're trying. All right, we got to get a visit. Uh-oh. Hey, big guy. How's Mr. James doing, huh? How you doing, guy? Hey, <laughs> got to do it. Fist bump. There you go. All right. Hey, big guy. Oh, <laughs> you blew it up. Did you blow it up? Oh, another one. Another one. Oh. <laughs> Good job, buddy. I oh, love one, my one big more. guy. One more. One more. Oh, oh, one more. Get him. Get him. Get him. There you go. Oh, oh. <laughs> there you go. Oh, thank you. Take right, the care. Hi, the other one. Come here. Come here. Come here. No. Oh, oh, girl, how you doing, big guy? Yeah, hi, buddy. Yeah. Oh. oh. Kisses, just what you need. Sloppy yeah. kissing. Yeah, we have to. We we got a notice from the state of Ohio. We have to register his tail as a lethal weapon. If you can't hear it, <laughs> that banging, that's his tail. It's about that long. It's awesome. He's already broken like two glasses, a dish, and a and a top of a 
a cornerware top to a uh, boiling pot that we have. So, yeah, he's only been with us like a week or so, and he's already destroyed like multiple things. So, but I mean, look at that face. Look at yeah, that face. He's good. Yeah, yeah, the ears, yeah. Yeah, the ears, the ears are perfect. They're yeah, perfect are <laughs> I love you too, buddy. Okay, you want to get down so I can finish the rest of my show? No, you want more hugs? I'm sorry. You guys sit down. <laughs> Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. You don't want to get him mad at you. <laughs> well, no, he's a freaking gigantic pit bull, but I don't think that's that's the misnomer about him. They're super big babies. He's very protective of the family for sure already. Cool. Anybody comes around the house, he's he starts to growling. If anybody comes too close, he gets up. Huh. And his favorite place to sleep, if we leave the door open, is he likes to sleep in his. You know, we put his dog bed over by the window, and he likes to sleep by the patio window. So oh, yeah? he's he's the cool. first to hear anybody come close to the house. Sure, so. that's cool. He's a good boy. All right. So final thoughts. Uh, sorry for the short show. Sorry for the. Uh, Short amount. You know what? It's not that much of a short show. We're only we're only eighteen minutes short. I know we had some fun. I knew we. I know we. I know we would have some fun just meeting you for sure. But uh, I I miss having T and um and Pook here. But we'll have him back next week. No worries about that. Congratulations to T and his daughter Sammy for a glorious victory on the field of fast pitch softball battle. And if you've never gone to a fast pitch softball game, I encourage you to do so because they are insane. Yes, they, they are, are insane. They are so cool to watch. Don't don't you know? Don't normally expect they're going to see a big blowout. The, generally speaking, they're they're uh, low scoring affairs, but especially the higher you get, I mean, but they're still try, amazing. Try to get that ball coming in at you that fast. Well, ask <laughs> you know, ask every major league baseball player who faced Jenny Finch in this week in baseball for like two years. And the only guy to actually drill her was Barry Bonds because yeah. you know steroids help you hit a baseball. But anyways. Um, <laughs> No, they don't. They just allow you to hit more of them throughout the year. That's what they do. Uh, you don't break down. But all right, yeah, let's do. It. We had a great, we had great fun. Even uh, spark, despite missing two of our regular uh, experts in the UFC, MMA, and NHL. I wish I could give you some NHL, but I just don't watch it enough, and I don't. I just don't follow and care that enough about it. So we'll get you caught back up next week with Pterodactyl, and I'm, I'm, I'm being insulted by the. He will be able to get us back up to speed. I'm getting attacked by this horse. <laughs> He's such a big baby. Stop. Stay. Yeah. See. Yeah, that'll know. work. No, it did. He's like, oh, I'm in trouble. Uh, sorry. Right. Yeah, let's do final thoughts, and then we'll close it out. And final it makes thoughts. You, yeah. Elkhart Lake next week. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a great show. There's no way Vander Bus. That track is just so beautiful. Uh, and the cars really, really uh, are right. impressive up there. They, they just – the track is made for open-wheel racing, uh, and yet they get NASCAR and, and they go crazy. So yeah. when the open-wheel cars there, you, you got to show up and you got to take a look at it. It's going to be neat. Absolutely. And then NASCAR's at Nashville next week Woo. on, on the, uh, the uh, one-mile oval. So it's an it's a asphalt, not asphalt. Concrete Oval, so uh, Nashville, first time in like 37 years they're back at, at Nashville, so that's going to be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I actually might have to turn into that race because, uh, yeah, I said, you said Nashville, I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember time, that. 37 years. Wow, yeah, holy cow. Well, maybe I should remember that because. I was alive when that happened, I guess. <laughs> ish. Yeah. Not ish. I was. Uh, but I was like six, seven. Yeah. So all right. That'd be interesting to see. Mile concrete track. Yeah. Is it flat? No, it's bank. How much? Not 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 serious, but it it it, it that's it, maybe it's like nowhere near like Texas. One point five mile kind of banking, like you know, fifteen, seventeen, something like that. Yeah, probably around there. Okay. Well, I mean it's not where you run flat out. It, yeah, well, it's concrete. You so do that out. anyways, but yeah. <laughs> All right, cool, interesting. All right, what else you got? I think that pretty much wraps it up. Well, you got SRX next week at, at uh, Knoxville, which that is going to be re interesting. Regular CBS? Huh? Yeah, it's regular? on CBS. Broadcast TV. Broadcast CBS. So. Nice. Yeah. What time? Eight o'clock on Saturday evening on oh. Eastern Time. We might have to. We have to make that happen. That's uh. I'm very interested in that. All right, yeah, cool. Yeah, huh? I mean, like I said, it's it's a good broadcast. They do an excellent job. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, it's a good broadcast team, and 
Uh, they have fun with it, and and that's the the whole idea. This is supposed to be a fun deal, and uh, so far the guys are having fun. Somebody keeps trying to chew my hand. Stop. <laughs> Down. Good boy. Stay. Oh, roll over. I didn't tell you to do that one. <laughs> He knows I get a treat when I do that, so that's the uh -huh. idea. Yeah, he's a hot mess. <laughs> uh, my fault, thoughts. Remember, never take a permanent solution to a temporary problem. We're all, every, there's a lot of uh, organizations out there to help you if you're having a rough time, and I know a lot of us are. Um, Balance stress being one of them, but you can reach out to, I bet you, any number of veteran organizations and, or businesses, and they will respond, and somebody will get you help ricky tick and gets you straight away with a professional please don't take a permanent solution to a temporary problem other than that hey enjoy the sports week coming up lots of baseball i said lots of racing not much going on mma wise although the ufc will have a fight card next week and you probably be able to catch it all free next week on espn plus or even just regular espn hockey is still going strong so we've got the nhl playoffs that's a lot of it on free tv especially nbc i think they got the rights to it make sure you check that out as well uh and hey get outdoors uh yeah, well that's the other thing i saw john hmm. ufc has been posting a lot of stuff of their fights even from last night uh on facebook on their facebook page so oh nice cool uh you know if you're interested in it look it up it, the fights are there they really do a nice job of it absolutely other than that thanks everybody for tuning in i know it's summer and everybody's out and about, and I appreciate that. Go out there and go out and do the outdoor stuff. Go out kayak and go do whatever you want to do outside. Enjoy it. Um, if you're in the Cincinnati area, make sure you drive with your windows up. And your air conditioning <laughs> on. I saw that. The dude tried to take down the telephone pole. <laughs> dude, that's, that's, that's just one of like 300 accidents so far. Like it's, it, it's on the news, on the radio every day. People are literally crashing into everything right now because cicadas are so bad i sit in my overwatch over beachmont avenue you know right yeah. by the pool yeah all right well that's an overwatch now you know why because the area from five yards to the left of the pool to the drive through up yeah. the street collapsed and flew onto beachmont avenue so oh, now you have me. a three staggered overlook because that whole hill gone <laughs> so I go there with with Carl when I take him for walks and I want to sit and have a cigarette. I sit there. That's our, our launch point. We walk around, we do his business, and then I sit there, smoke a cigarette, and then I go take we take our 20, 30 minute walk around Mount there. Washington, right? Because he's he's a pit bull. I gotta wear him out. Yeah. And I sit there and watch it, but there's cicadas everywhere. And guess who doesn't necessarily like to eat them but kill them? Carl, <laughs> he's like a psycho. He gets up, he hides in the mouth, spits well, him out, and then you know, it's the noise ag aggravates him, so he's gonna have fun. Oh, he he, he Hulk smashes him. He, he gets up and then <laughs> him. And he's like, not gonna bother my master, bitch. <laughs> and then he sees another one like squirrel, and then he goes off with another one. It's, oh, it's horrible. But uh, yeah, yeah, uh, you all. I think you got a good match. There's no if, ands, or buts. Oh, yeah. He's a Marine. He used to be. He might have just screwed up and cheated on his wife a couple of times, got knocked out of peg in the, in the resurrection uh, uh, sweepstakes, you know, um, a reincarnation of sweepstakes. But he, he's all heart, all athletic. He's just, uh, but he just <laughs> playing in his head all the time. He literally rolls up. He'll jump up from the other side of the couch, come run around the apartment, jump up on the couch, Get so excited to roll over on his belly that he spins himself off the couch into the coffee table. Clonk. <laughs> it's like, bro, you're 50 pounds. You can't do that. You're going to like break stuff. Like, oh. <laughs> but back to my original point as Carl has finally laid next to me, like a loyal doggy, worn out. Um, get outside, enjoy this weather. Um, you're actually allowed to do it in most states now. So yeah. take full advantage. Kentucky, it's, it's unreal. Kentucky, no mask unless you're in dollars. So. Yeah. Well, we don't have any masks anywhere in Ohio, which is awesome. Um, but, yeah, just go out there and enjoy it. Get on the river. Go zip lining. Go take your kids fishing. Go take a stay vacation in Hockey Hills or, or, you know, some little place. Get a cabin for a day or two and just get out and just leave your cell phone and just go. Bring your laptop so you can watch VRS. But leave everything else. 
and and just get away for a day or two and just have a fire and calm down and just holy shit we made it through this it's yeah. over we made it through it it's gone at least until they come up with the next bullshit but get out there and enjoy your family get out and enjoy the sun and if you're by the beach i hate you but go enjoy that go lay by the ocean <laughs> Drink way too many fruity drinks. Regret the next day. Calling to work sick, but just have a good time and live some life. Understand yeah. your your a lot of people's personal evaluation of risk has been way overblown over last year, and just go have some fun. Go enjoy life. Enjoy life, please. Uh, on behalf of Pops, myself, the rest of Sportsers crew, and all of the Veteran Radio Syndicate, have a good night and God bless. Take care, everybody.